Hey guys, so back at the coach and today is a, a very exciting session because we have barbell squats back in and a lot of people might be thinking, what, barbell squats? That's not optimal. And to tell you the truth, uh, it really depends on the person, but I'll get into that later on. And what I've found is they work for me and I love them. And I'll talk about barbell squats in this video. We'll go into depth about whether you should do them or not, but ultimately, like they're fun they're fucking fun and i love them so i'm glad to have them back in because i've done them for a while like back in the day for many years and it's been a while since i've done them though so it's, it feels nice it does feel it feels a bit like home really when i do them training's going really well right now feeling strong performances on the up you know we're far into this push so as it should be and just doing the do with taking those necessary progressions now to come back as a, a good like a competitive pro bodybuilder. After seeing Mitch Jarvis at the Wells, that was extremely motivating stuff. And he looked absolutely crazy. And it, what it was clear is just like that time, that muscle maturity I need, it just, it comes with time. But I do believe I can get there. And I believe the muscularity is there. And it's just about polishing the look and getting the certain areas that need to be brought up, brought up ultimately. So yeah, we'll get into it. We'll, we'll train hard, train heavy as always. Classic old school barbell squats are in. Big leg, big leg session incoming. Let's do it. Uh, there's something actually I wanted to talk about because I've been seeing like people prepping. Obviously, it's prep right now for lots of people, and I've been seeing a lot of people competing qualifiers, and then they've got to go to the finals. So I think this is a really worthwhile topic to just discuss and talk to you guys about if you're thinking about competing. It's really about playing your cards right if you're going to compete. You need to understand how to play your cards to do as well as you can with your physique. What I mean by that is understanding how much fat loss you need to achieve going into your qualifier to then get you into the finals. Uh, but understanding that once you are pilled, you are now in a state where you might lose tissue and you're not going to hold performance as well. So understanding that if you've got a physique that is huge, loads of muscle, like loads of loads of muscle. You've got to be confident you can qualify being 90% there, not 100%. Because if you can do that and you can land a condition which will get that qualification, you then have many weeks to go into the finals and improve. And the judges like to see someone improve. If you are pilled at the qualifier, how do you improve into the finals if you're completely pilled, like you're all the way in? It's gonna be difficult, right? So. That's about understanding how you play your cards because for some people, they will not have enough muscle to do that. And that's when you need to be pilled to qualify. But if you're a physique that is good and you can do very well, be smart, you know, play your cards at the right time, chase condition at the right time in, so you can get the most out of the shows that matter in terms of the finals. So yeah, it's something to think about. Be strategic with your prep, think of believing your physique and understanding that having that confidence to hold off a little bit we'll see more out of that end result. I love this seated leg curl because it's, it's really heavy in the stretch and I feel like you're getting that challenge where you want and at the same time it keeps your hips back because you're literally down. So a lot of the time when you do a seated leg curl it can take away from your squat variations if your hips are coming up and your pelvis is tilting a lot, you're putting a lot of tension through your lower back. So I've got barbell squats after this. This is spot on. I can keep the control on the hamstrings throughout without losing it onto the glutes because of the way I can keep my hips down. And it's a very good leg curl. So if you've got like a kneeling leg curl, that does feel good. Some aren't the best, some are pretty good. I would definitely advise using it, especially if you're doing it before like a lower back loading squat, like a barbell squat or a Smith squat. It's a good way to do it. The only issue with this machine is how long it takes to set up. Like you have to flip it around every time. Cool. 
every jump all night is so heavy. It is six for eleven. Go up one, get seven reps. You'll notice, like, I went into my other side quite quick there. If you've got a side that's a lot stronger than the other, you don't have to rest for that long either side. I don't, and it's obviously single leg, single arm stuff can add a lot of time to your session. So when you do it, you only need to rest for a while if the difference isn't that big. Whereas for me, my left leg is so much stronger than my right on a leg curl, which is really weird because my right one is the one that looks better. So it's very odd. <laughs> uh, but it's not an issue because the right one's the side opposed. So if I can bring this side up more by doing it first and taking it to true failure and then just matching it on the weak side afterwards, that's a really good way of balancing out uh, any like unsymmetrical muscle, muscle groups. Just start on your weaker side, then go into a stronger side afterwards. And over time, as you progress that weaker side, go into complete failure, it will match, it will uh, level out, so. I've never felt so much pressure on time my laces. I know I said I was talking about barbell squats and why for some people it could actually be optimal. So I personally, when I did Smith squats, they're fun, but I personally wish I never did them. I honestly don't think they were for me. And what I mean by that is the ability to go to failure and stick with it. Whenever I'm under a Smith, because of the fixed nature of the bar, I'd always squat and my lower back would fail earlier or my upper back would even fail a little bit, like it would round. And I wouldn't be able to move the bar to my favor. So on a barbell squat, if your lower back's failing, you can like move the bar a little bit, right? It's free. So you can move your hips in favor of like, how you want to move it. And you're probably thinking, well, isn't that more glute if you bring your hips? Well, yes, it is. But when you look at my physique, and this could be the case with a lot of people, that's not a problem. Like if I can get a little bit more glute out of a squat variation, that's fine because I need more glute. My quads are very dominant. So what this now allows me to do is take this squat variation to complete failure and in a much safer way and it makes me feel a lot more stronger and I can get so much more out of this. I know this can go a lot further than the Smith because I'd always go into the Smith, I'd always be wondering where to put my feet because of the fixed bar, you can't, it's not natural, right? You have to figure out where to put your feet. Barber squat, you walk out, boom, you're ready. So that just shows guys, for some people, a barbell squat could actually be better than a smith squat. So we don't just rule something out because studies have said it's not optimal, it's got less stability. You need to think about certain movements for you and figure out, figure out whether like, that is needed for your specific physique, the muscle groups you want to bring up, and also just your biomechanics. It's not like a case for everyone. Smiths, stable, that's it. It's not like that. So really think about it, and maybe some of you guys watching it, try a barbell squat. Don't be scared to do that. See how it feels, and then let me know. <laughs>
Easy. Lose count on Barbara Scott's. Yeah. Oh. Just need a lot of practice with them, like the breathing. Because you brace at the top, really test the fitness. And the arm rack was all weird. What's happened with that? I don't think it was eight. Charlie says it was eight. Let's see. Yeah, nine. I'll take that. Fuck me. This gym's like a sauna. If you had asked me what's the worst thing 
about bulking, it's sweating and training in heat. Literally, absolutely unbearable. I'm so bad, I just sweat so much. I don't know how Ronnie Coleman did it in Metroflex. That was like, what, 35 degrees? And I'm pretty sure they didn't have AC. It looks like they didn't have AC. And yeah, God, God knows how he did that. If you are training and it's hot, make sure you drink so much water. And make sure to increase your sodium with it so you're making the most of hydrating yourself. Because you sweat so much, you lose so much water. So literally, I'd say like for me right now, I, I have five liters of water before I train. Otherwise, performance just isn't, isn't where I want it to be. And I've had like two of these already. So yeah, stay hydrated. Yeah, I was happy with that leg press set. I, I wanted to, because barbell squats right now, they're, little, they're obviously rusty. So the ability to drive a good stimulus is gonna be a little, a little off. Whilst I still feel like it's way better than Smith's for me, just in, in terms of being able to get like deep and with a good amount of knee flexion and feeling confident, it's still not gonna be where like, I'd like it to be just yet. And that's normal. The one limitation with my split, it's a 10 day split. So it's 10 days between squats. So it takes some time and you're gonna to have to understand barber squats aren't gonna feel good for the first few weeks, especially if you do one set, which is all I wanna do, one set's enough. Otherwise I just bury myself through other stuff. Uh, whereas the leg press, I'm so used to that leg press. It's so stable, I've done it so many times that that's my ability to really chase it and drive a massive stimulus and get some really good work in, which I did, I was like two reps up. So very happy with that. I just gotta understand like barber squats It'll be a few weeks before they're feeling really, really good. And that's fine, like, that's how it should be. It is a free weight movement. And we're trying to get back into the groove that I was in you know, a couple of years ago, so. So yeah, this is a really cool piece of kit. Kaiser is pressurized. So I'm gonna do the leg extension. So the buttons here control the resistance. So you can hear like, so you can't, that's when you take the pressure out and then this builds up the pressure and it says the resistance here. So I'll do like maybe 210 for my work in and then once I fail, I'll go into partials and you can do like really good force reps where, well not even force, you can just reduce the resistance and then keep going. So when you're like getting close to failure, you take the pressure off. You can do it at literally the perfect time. Whereas when you have someone spotting you, they don't know exactly where you're failing at, right? They can't, it's hard to tell. So sometimes you've got someone spotting you and they're spotting you a little bit too early. So doing it at the perfect time of this makes it spot on. And you can literally fail in every part of the strength profile. You can fail in the short, the lengthened, and then rinse everything out of it. So yeah, very, very good. I love it. And it's also really good in your knees, which is spot on. <laughs> That's nuts, honestly. You can just do one like absolute set where you just rinse everything out of your quads. Fail it, length and partials. You will notice it feels a bit different. Like it's not the same as having plates on or like a pin loaded machine. It's a little bit like jittery sometimes. But once you get used to it, it, it improves a lot. And I've noticed that. I think this is the third time running it. It feels a lot more natural. And the stimulus for your cause is crazy. And the next day, the soreness is, obviously it's a novel stimulus, I'm not used to it, but the soreness is very high, so that's a good sign, but. <laughs> yeah, literally just doing one set on that, and that's it. So three sets of quads. But I actually trialed 
Well, last week when I did barbell squats, I did two sets on squats because of the fact I was trying to get used to the movement a little bit. And I went into deadlifts and my core's were a little sore. And it meant when I went into conventional pulls, I wasn't getting enough knee flexion. So I was basically doing a stiff leg again, like I've done in the past. So literally three sets of cores, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do in this session. Because one, I'm rinsing everything out of the sets I do do. So there's a massive stimulus being created anyway. Two, any more, it's not really needed. I don't need big more cores than how much more I need from my glutes, the rectus, my back from the deadlift. So, you know, doing less from quads to get more out of the deadlift is what I want to do, you know? If there's one tip I could give bodybuilders that are just starting out with leg training is do not neglect your glutes. Because I made that error when I first started training. It's very easy to get fixated on your quads, your hamstrings, and just training them. And you don't really think about doing hip thrusts. Uh, you just don't really think about it, do you? You, you naturally think, oh, I'll do deadlifts, stuff like that. But if you neglect movements like this, you will struggle to get into the condition you want. You will probably find that the last thing to come in will be your glutes, and you'll be rushing fat loss, having to lose loads of body fat off your glutes to get them in. Whereas if you grow the size of your glute, then it will be way easier to create a lean and look through that area. You've got to look at it like percentage of muscle to body fat. If the muscle's way bigger, then obviously the muscle percentage is way higher and it's easier to create that lean look, that, that striated look that we all want. And that's something that I have struggled with in the past because of the fact that in my first few years of training, I never did stuff like this. And I really believe it's something that's gonna change this off season, spending time doing you know, heavy hit for us, getting really strong at it. It's gonna show when I diet down. So do not neglect them. I promise you, it is so important. And it's something that will really probably make the difference between you know, winning or not winning is that conditioning through your glutes. Oh. I found with hip thrust, they feel the best when you prioritize a lot of weight and you just stay in the short. So don't go too far down and just stay in the short and just keep it moving. And you just keep that continuous tension on like the top of your glute. I've always found like this felt the best doing it like this, but yeah, this was just one set as well. Cause I've got deadlifts in a few couple of seats. So one set of this, one set of glute bars, leg press. That's enough for me. And, Honestly, this off season, I've seen so much glute growth. It's probably the muscle that's growing the most. And it's through prioritizing a lot of weight and keeping it in the short, keeping it on the top of your glute, understanding the needs of that exercise, and then going into another exercise and understanding the specific needs of that. So the next exercise for glutes is lower glute. We're working in the lengthening range. Uh, so yeah, very nice setup for glutes. That has been working wonders. So excited to see what happens when I die down. Hopefully it'll be a little, a little bit different as a condition across that area.
heavy in the sword. Fuck, it's tear my shoulder. Oh. I need to be more aware of like my setup because I think the seat's further forward. Felt really good like that actually, but harder. <laughs> so I just need to keep it consistent. You guys might not notice this, like sometimes you'll do a set and you're like, oh, that was shit. And something might be slightly off with your setup. So just log that, log, log it down, like log like, where you have the seat, where you have the back pad, and it will make sure that you're standardizing everything, which in my opinion really is important. You need things standardized with training. So you really get your progressions and you can understand how things are moving. I know some people might say it's like crazy amounts of attention to detail, but that's the difference between becoming like an exceptional bodybuilder or not. But like unless you're born for it and you have like crazy genetics, you need that attention to detail. So writing down those little things, like it's, it's a way that a lot of us could probably improve and something that improve on and it's something that I should do more of. As you can see there, that was difficult. <sighs> oh, it's out of breath. You're probably getting used to me now. Every single video I'm gonna be like, <laughs> and then I'm probably gonna get people come to me like, oh, you're not healthy, bro. Oh, steroids. Uh, it's just fucking peak off season. It is what it is, but being here is gonna show when I come down. It's gonna allow me to grow. So yeah, fuck it. It's not fun, but I know it's what, what's required, so. Yeah, I've been uh, experimenting with length and partials only on cars, just because of all the studies coming out saying that the same amount of growth can be created from a length and partial as a full range of motion, like set, which, you know, I don't know, like we'll see. The things, a lot of studies are not done on trained individuals, so you've got to take it with a grain of salt. So I just thought, just do partials on cars, see what happens. If they grow, that's a good sign. And the cars are the best muscle to do it on, because cars are so used to, used to the shortened position. Because the shortened position is literally walking, whereas it's never in the lengthened position. So I think it's quite smart just to work in that lengthened range only and see what happens. So we're seeing it does feel good, but it is a bit different.
So yeah, that was a really good session. Very productive, lots of progressions. Um, I was chatting to Pete. I was saying how like it gets so long, all the plates going on and off. But I have a lot of exercises, but they all hit different areas. Like they all hit different areas, and they're, they're needed to be in my plan. And I know like how important that is. So instead of putting the same volume onto less exercises and doing like three sets, I want to make sure I'm complete. So. That's why there's a lot of exercises you saw today with very low volume. So like one, two sets per exercise max. And that's always what I think is works and will make you grow all, across all areas evenly, the most efficiently, as opposed to doing like four sets on one leg press, which just works one area of your quad. You know, do more exercises if you have the time. It does take a while and it does feel a little bit tedious sometimes, but it is worth it and it will pay off. And yeah, very enjoyed, really enjoyed, very enjoyed, really enjoyed the, the barbell squats. They're moving nice, nicely. I feel like they're going to go a good, in a good direction. I still need some more confidence and experience with, with it because whilst I'm, I've used them a couple of times before, uh, it's not at that stage yet where I'm feeling like super comfy. So probably a few more weeks and it'll be feeling really good. I just need to be patient. It's just the arm rack, where I have my arms, keeping stability through the set. It's those little details that really do matter. But I love it. Like I get so excited to do a barbell squat, so much more than a Smith squat. And I really believe that's the most important thing, enjoyment. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. Lots more videos to come. We'll keep the training videos. We'll also do other types of videos. If you have any suggestions, drop it in the comments. I really would appreciate that because so we can keep it, you know, a bit, you know, mixed up in terms of the content that we create, especially when the off season is so long, it can get a bit monotonous at some times. So it's important to be versatile with the content for you guys. I think you probably would appreciate that. And like the video as always, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.